thank you for downloading this podcast. You're listening to Gnostic Lectures. The website is rikiradio.com. My name is Ejim Giros. The title of this lecture is The Parallel Universes or Parallel Dimensions of Space and Time and Our Seven Bodies. If we remember what happened in lecture number six, Today is number nine, lecture number nine. Lecture number six, we spoke about the seven rounds, remember? Seven rounds, seven human races, seven sub-races, according to the law of seven. Well, today, we'll be connected with that lecture, the seven rounds, which are interrelated with the so-called parallel dimensions of space and time, or parallel universes, and also our seven bodies. It's important to remember that the original dimension, we could say the more real of all realities, is called the absolute. The absolute is the homeland of the spirit. We could also say the homeland of God and a spiritual universe made of pure light that we cannot perceive physically. It's invisible to the human eye and also to any mechanical instrument. So the absolute is where life descended into the universe as a school of learning. So then after that, life descended in a spiritual form the light descended from the Absolute to create the stars, solar systems, and all human species using the matter of the universe. So we could say a spirit and matter both correspond to the meaning of the word God. A spirit and matter are two, two basic forces. So then in Latin, we say Deus, that means God. In Spanish, we translate Deus, it means dos, or number two. So, a spirit and matter both compose the real meaning of the word God. God is the spirit, God is matter. Actually, in Latin, matter means mother, mother the Divine Mother of the Universe. The Divine Father of the Universe is the Spirit. A male and a female connected to create the universe and create all the species. This is what religions call the Holy Spirit with different names in different religions. So we could also say the fire, which is light crystallized, and the water, which is also a force composed of many elements, you know, represent male and female within the creation that also eventually will evolve. What evolves is not the spirit. What evolves is matter, transformed into energy, and energy will return to become matter, will crystallize over and over again. So remember the first round was the mental round or atomic. So our planet Earth was atomic originally or mental. The second round was the astral or molecular. So it's like different layers of the same planet or different dimensions or different parallel universes were interconnected, interrelated, you, do, you know, but acting on themselves. So we could say there were two different Earths, mental Earth, molecular er Earth. The third round correspond to the etheric or vital, connected with the ether, an element of nature interrelated with electromagnetic. That electromagnetism is the one that connects the atomic particles with the molecular particles and also eventually with the cellular. So this is the third round. 
Now the fourth round, or the fourth planet Earth, is cellular. And this is the end of the expansion of the universe. The end of the growth of planet Earth. Cellular or physical. And here we are today. Then remember in our lecture number six, we explain also that these rounds will continue, but returning, going back to the absolute. So the fifth round, we return to the aesthetic or vital electromagnetism. The sixth round will become molecular again. We return to the great light or the absolute. And finally, we return to the first round or atomic or mental. So the seven rounds are really the space connected with matter and energy that we all use to express and manifest life. All species live within all these parallel universes. So right now, we could say that we're simultaneously living in a physical world, in an electromagnetic world or etheric. We're living also in a molecular world and also an atomic world, which is our mind. The molecular universe is the same emotional universe called the astral in esoteric studies. So, you see, we all live simultaneously in different parallel universes, different parallel dimensions. And of course, Mother Nature provided us with different bodies to be able to move, to be able to be part of those parallel universes or parallel dimensions. So we do have seven bodies. Did you know that? Did we know that? Samaela Unveor, the founder of Gnostic Anthropology worldwide, he described the seven bodies. And also, Helena Petrovna Vlavatsky, the, the founder of the Theosophical Society, described them, you know, beautifully. And many other schools of esoteric studies have been also describing them. All ancient religions have also described them. So we could say our body number one, listen to this carefully, our body number one is our spiritual body, made of pure light, pure light, a habitant of the absolute. And that divine superior body, superior being, is called in many ancient religions, monad or atman. It doesn't really matter, but it is God within that body manifested. The most realistic reality of ourselves, Atman, the spirit. So Atman or our spirit descended from the absolute in a journey to acquire knowledge, to grow spiritually. But remember that we said that the spirit does not evolve. What happens when we acquire more and more consciousness, when we create more and more our soul, then we can expand our spiritual being. It means we can incorporate more and more energies, divine energies from the universal spirit of life, from God itself. So, our first body is then again our spiritual body. Now, what descended from the absolute, and here we are, is actually a little piece of our spirit, a spark, a spark. Because our bodies wouldn't be able to tolerate the tremendous amount of energy that the spirit carries within. We would be electrocuted if our spirit was complete. But some people can do that. Some divine superior beings, like Jesus Christ, Buddha, Krishna, Moses, they've been able to incorporate more and more aspects of this divine spiritual being, this original body, and they can tolerate, they can resist the power of incredible amount of energy that this body carries descending from the absolute. 
So these people are not a spark. These people are a flame or more than a flame. The second body, we can call it the divine soul or the divine consciousness in accordance with our level of being. What is that? We all have a different level of being. You know, either we are baby spirits or we are child spirits or we are teenagers or we are grown up or we are ancient, ancient creations of God. Like, for example, Jesus Christ is one of them. Jesus Christ, his spirit can cover the entire galaxy and not only our galaxy, the Milky Way, many other galaxies according to Gnostic anthropology. So the divine soul or second body or the Buddhic body, in the case of these superior beings, is also majestic, gigantic, incredible, powerful, with a level of intelligence, cosmic intelligence, we cannot describe with words. Our body number three, we can call it the human soul or the causal, causal body, a body connected with a cause, you see, and that causal body was given to us in the stars before we descended into our planet. The human soul is an electronic body. And why do we have then two souls, a divine soul and a human soul? This is the mystery of the twin souls, because in the future we'll be describing better what happens with the two souls one is masculine, the other is feminine. We will explain that later in another lecture. These two souls, if we want to reach masterhood, will have to amalgamate into one. This is the marriage of the twin. Then that way we can ascend the human soul into the level of the divine soul. And this is reaching masterhood. So this is body number three, the human soul. What about the mind? The mind is number four. It's another body. It is another body made of pure atomic particles. There are no cells there, no molecules, no etheric particles. It is a body composed only of atomic particles. So the mind is not the brain. Please listen to my words carefully. Many people and many scientists are totally convinced that the brain is the mind. It is not. The mind is free to move around. This is why in how many cases we have seen real stories, real stories of a mother who is sleeping and then in her dream she sees her son in a battlefield being killed and the son is dying and he calls his mother, Mom, I'm dying. I want to see you. And suddenly both are connected because the mind of the mother, the atomic body of the mother that can fly faster than the speed of light and the mind of the son dying in the battlefield have met, have encountered in the same battlefield in a universe invisible to the human eye. In, a, in an atomic universe, the universe of the mind, the mental round, you see? So the mind is not the brain. The brain we could see is the case, the electronic case, the computer, where thoughts are organized, composed, and developed. This is it. It's like a computer, a beautiful, magnificent computer, better and more intelligent, of course, than the computers that we acquire in this life. But in reality, the mind is not the brain. What about, you know, body number five? The mind is body number four. The body number five is the astral body, the molecular body. Many esoteric schools describe the astral body also in our dreams. We live the physical body and we travel through the different parallel universes. Mainly the astral body explores the astral universe, which is the second round, the molecular universe, the astral universe. 
the astral earth, the molecular earth. And this is why our dreams, you know, sometimes they are more real than the physical reality that we experience every day. This is why we also have to understand that dreams can be more realistic than reality, what we call reality, but also dreams can be an illusion. Why all of that? In a past lecture, we explained about the ego, remember, our subconsciousness, our animal nature, our inferior nature. When the ego is ruling, controlling the astral body, controlling our soul, of course, our dreams are, most of the time, wrong perceptions of the astral universe. Many, in many cases, they are just fantasies, desires which are not fulfilled. You see, aspirations not fulfilled, a reflection of our own fear. The purpose of these studies is to transform the astral body into a conscious astral body. Later, we will be talking about that in a different lecture. So this is the body number five, a molecular body called astral body. What about the body number six? Did you know that Russian scientists a hundred years ago discovered a camera called the Kirlian camera, and they discovered the fourth dimension. The Russian scientists were taking pictures of a person sleeping, and they took many, many, many pictures, and they did all kinds of experiments, parapsychological experiments. And suddenly, when the pictures were developed, they could see two different bodies, the person sleeping on the bed and floating above, another perfect representation of the physical body. In many cases, they convinced themselves that this was, you know, a problem from the laboratory that developed the pictures. And then they realized after the experience was repeated and repeated many, many times, thousands of different times with different people, they always realized there were two bodies, one resting on the bed and the other floating above. And they call this body the bioplastic body, which is the same etheric body that we described before, part of the etheric universe connected with the ether, which is the third round. There is an etheric earth, and that etheric earth is the same paradise. All immortal people that live on earth live there in the fourth dimension. That this is called paradise or Eden. Now, the Russian discovered the bioplastic body. They entered into the fourth dimension, and today, you know, the entire human race have entered into the fourth dimension. Remember cell phones, internet, computers, radio, television, you know, we are already inside of the fourth dimension. The only problem is we still don't know how to control it. The fourth dim dimension is controlling us connected with our own ego, because the ego is subconscious, unconscious, infraconscious. We don't perceive reality the way it is. We see a twisted reality. And this is why our studies eventually will get there to the point where we can learn how to control our nature, how to control our bodies, our different organisms, and then we can really learn to rule our own lives to become leaders of ourselves, to stop being slaves of the universe. And this is body number six. What about body number seven? Here we are. You know, the physical body, the cellular body. Scientists, you know, this is the trouble with medicine today. Not only medicine, the entire scientific community will continue being very much lost because they continue being three-dimensional. They forget there are more dimensions, you know. The fourth dimension is the etheric dimension, the bioplastic dimension. Did you know that every atomic particle of the vital body or bioplastic or etheric body gives energy to the physical body? So at night, when we are sleeping, the etheric body levitates above receiving all the energy from the sun and the stars of the universe. And in the morning, 
the aesthetic body returns to interconnect with every particle of the physical body to give us energy. This is why when we sleep well, our energies have been recharged. When we have a bad night, we wake up very exhausted. Why is that? Because the aesthetic body, the vital body or bioplastic, is announcing us, is telling us that there is something wrong with the physical body, with the cellular body. An illness is coming. It's an advice. It's a warning that we should always learn to listen. And also through Gnostic anthropology studies, we can learn to sleep better and better the way babies do it. Learning to concentrate deeply into relaxing and into resting properly. Now, so coming back into our scientific community, the trouble is they are too much three-dimensional. The three dimensions are height, length, and width because they concentrate into the physical body only. And they forget there are many illnesses which are not cellular. Like cancer. Cancer, for example, is a molecular virus. Did you know that? It's a molecular virus. And we cannot control it. We cannot annihilate that virus just like this. The actual system, the actual technology to cure cancer is not really a cure. It's an experiment that will maybe destroy the cellular, the cancerous cells. But what about the molecular particles? You see the point? What about the roots of cancer? We know the cause of cancer. And eventually we will tell humanity through our lectures in the near future what, what are the causes of all illnesses without exception. You see, mental illnesses, for example, the mind is atomic. So there is an, an imbalance within the mind. Our atomic particles are hitting each other and they are damaging not only the mind, the atomic body, they are also entering into the molecular and into the cellular bodies, creating all kinds of troubles. Because we don't know how to live, we haven't learned, you know, to understand the laws of nature. And this is why we don't live in accordance with cosmic law, divine law. So this is very important to be understood. So the first two bodies, we are going to repeat them all. A spirit made of pure light our real being. The second body, the divine soul, also made of light, but inferior in degree of divinity to the spirit. Number three, the human soul, made of electrons, called the causal body, the body of causes, cause and effect. The body number four, the mind, atomic body, made of atomic particles. Every thought is atomic. Did you know that? Number five, body number five, the astral body, made of molecules, connected with emotions. This is the body of emotions. Listen to this. This is connected with emotional intelligence. The scientists are just beginning, beginning to discover and develop. Body number six, the aesthetic body, the same bioplastic discovered by Russian scientists, and the vital body, you know, is the same vital body that interpenetrates every cell to give us the energy that we need, we need to stay alive. And body number seven is the physical body or cellular body. Coming back into this Kirlian camera, today, you know, police in many, many, many countries all over the world, the military, they use special lenses in the battlefield or when they want to make an arrest of uh, criminal activities. They can look through these special lenses and see inside of a house. They can see through walls. Not very clearly, not the way we would see if the walls were not there. Today, we have entered into the fourth dimension into the ether of nature. 
So today, this is not a mystery anymore to anybody. But it's important to understand that if we really want to develop medicine, we should pay more attention to these studies, to these discoveries, because this knowledge has been taught in ancient times. The actual Chinese medicine describes this kind of information. Why is it that our so-called Western medicine doesn't pay attention to Chinese medicine? Well, of course, Chinese medicine is not only one approach. There are also different kinds of perceptions of Chinese medicine. Gnostic anthropology has all the information because after the catastrophe of Atlantis, the survival from Atlantis moved into what today is ancient Tibet or ancient China and also ancient Mexico and also ancient Peru. The Aztecs, the Mayans and the Incas, you, did you know that they spoke the same Tibetan language? They, they are almost the same, even physically. They look very similar as an ethnic group living in different parts of the world. So the survivors from Atlantis, they have learned how to heal from any illness. They discovered the powers of the universe to be applied into their own organisms. And they knew how to heal physical, mental or emotional illnesses. You see, so they, they learn how to annihilate illness 100%. Is it possible we can do that in the near future? The answer is yes. Let's hope it doesn't happen after the global catastrophe because the survivors will be trained by superior beings about how to get there to that stage of perfection where illness can be annihilated 100%. And also how to live longer. Did you know that our real ancestor that lived here in ancient Lemuria, what today is the Pacific Ocean, you know, there was a continent there. Did you know that the Lemurians lived a thousand years and they look 40, 50 maximum? Some of them lived 1200 years. So the Bible describes people who live so long, which is also true. It's a historical reality is not an illusion, is not a dogmatic perception of religious crazy individuals. No, we're talking about reality. Now, it's important that we try to remember this, that we become more and more aware of our own reality, because as we said it before, in ancient Greece, at the entrance of the temple of Delphi or Delphos, there is a sentence that we should also remember. O oh man, woman, know yourself, and you will know the gods and the universe. The ancient gods of the Greeks are the same angels, archangels, seraphims, thrones, etc., etc. There is no difference. No difference. So we shouldn't be surprised that there is a tremendous coincidence between what the ancient Greeks knew and what we know today. So if we learn to know ourselves, we can also know the laws of the universe. Did you know, as we said it before, that we are a perfect representation of the galaxy? Our Milky Way lives within ourselves. You see, it's important to remember that. It's important to become aware of that. So that will give you the energy. That will give you the positive thinking and also the warrior spirit to improve ourselves constantly, to change for good, to awaken the superman, superwoman within. Did you know that? The spirit is immortal, will never die because it were never born. The divine soul has a beginning, has an end. Body number two. The human soul, body number three, also has a beginning, has an end. The fourth body, the mind, has also a beginning and an end. The astral body or the molecular body also has a beginning and an end. The etheric body also has a beginning and an end. And the physical body, of course, we see it every day. 
Millions of people die every day, and millions of people begin a new life through birth. So, it's important that we understand all of it. So, what's the reality of all realities? Our spirit. Our spirit made of pure light, a habitant of the absolute. We descended from the absolute, and at the end of the planet Earth, we will return to the absolute, only as a spiritual force a spiritual being, but also carrying within the spirit all the experiences accumulated through millions of years living here on Earth or maybe many other planets where we are going to be allo allocated, where we have been allocated already to get more and more experience, more and more knowledge. Remember that Gnosis means knowledge, knowing from time to time, from moment to moment. Remember that time is relative. Time is real, but relative. But in the absolute, time does not exist. You see, this is something that our poor brain cannot understand because the mind has a limit. The mind has a beginning, has an end. So when we return to the absolute, no one of the bodies will return, only the spirit. The light of the light will return to the light. How can we describe this better in a, in a stronger, we could say, explanation adjusted a little bit to a scientific approach? Well, the black holes that scientists have discovered in the universe, there are the bridge between the universal absolute, the spiritual universe, and our physical universe, and molecular and atomic and electromagnetic. So basically, we could say that we are exhaled from the absolute and planted here in our planet. And eventually when the planet dies, we are going to be inhaled back into the absolute. That means our planet will transform into a moon, will die eventually, and the universe, you know, will continue because the process of creation and recreation of the universe will continue always. Essentially, we are all part of an, a magnificent spiritual plan, and that plan considers the possibility of a spiritual growth. If we are baby spirits, we come to the universe, we come to Earth to learn, to grow psychologically and spiritually. So if we came here as a tiny little spark that lives in our heart, our heart temple, that's the way we call it, because the entire human organism is a temple. Everybody should become a temple. So essentially, then that divine spark that lives in our heart if we fulfill the purpose of life, which is to awaken our consciousness, to create soul, we'll be able to transform into a flame. We won't continue being a spark forever and ever. We will learn to become a flame. And superior individuals like Jesus Christ or other superior beings, they become a gigantic fire. You see, can you imagine a solar individual can grow within the solar system. What about, you see, a galactic, a galactic individual? That individual, a spiritual being, can, can really transform into such a gigantic superior being that can really perceive the reality of the galaxy. And we've been told that Jesus Christ is higher than a galactic individual. He's an infinite infinite individual, which is someone who can control many, many galaxies. He can also contribute to create many, many galaxies. So it is important then to understand the universe outside and the universe within. Remember that the macrocosmos and the microcosmos and the interrelationship between the outside and the inside and remember what we said, O man, woman, know yourself, and you will know the gods and the universe. 
you will know the superior beings and the loss of nature and also the divine loss. Now, to complete this lecture, it's important that we do a practice. You know, we could, we could say a meditation practice to be able to understand ourselves better. We are going to describe the seven bodies and we are going to try to remember exactly the position of each body and its degree of tremendous realism or relative realism. So the practice is the following. We should say, I am not the physical body. I am not the cellular body. I am not the physical body. I have a physical body. I have it. It's a vehicle of the spirit. But I am not the physical body. We are not the physical body. Number two, I am not the aesthetic body, the vital body or the bioplastic body. I am not. I have an aesthetic body. I have a vital body. I have a bioplastic body. But I am not this second body. I am not the astral body or the molecular body. I am not. I have an astral body to move within the astral parallel universes or a molecular body. I have a molecular body, but I am not the astral body or body number three. My mind. What about my mind? Am I my mind? No. I am not the mind. I am not the atomic body. I have a mind, I have atomic particles within my body, organized through a body called mind. Am I the human soul made of electrons? The answer is no. I am not the human soul, I am not the electronic body. I have a human soul, I have an electronic body. Am I a divine soul or the buddhic body made of pure light? Am I? The answer is no. I have a divine soul. I have a buddhic body provided by the divinity. All these bodies have been provided by the divinity and mother nature in perfect association to be able to function, to be able to move as vehicles of the spirit, as wardrobe of the spirit. What about the body number seven or number one? The spirit. Am I the spirit? The answer is yes, yes, yes. I am the spirit. We are spiritual beings. We are immortal spiritual beings. We will never die because we were never born. Remember my words. Remember my words. Remember my words. Thank you for downloading this podcast. You have listened to Gnostic Lectures. The website is rikiradio.com. My name is Ijim Jeros, and the title of our lecture today has been Parallel Dimensions of Space and Time, or the Parallel Universes and Our Seven Bodies.